Hi guys, this is JSNO.com and I'm here with a review of the OnePlus 6, the famous flagship from OnePlus for the year 2018. So the OnePlus 6 is here, it has an interesting matte back and it's made of glass and metal, it's got a dual camera, it's everything you expect and it's also affordable. It's priced at around $529 as the starting price for the 6GB RAM, 64GB storage version and you can get it from a special link we have for you which if you get it from there you get a special coupon for 20 bucks of accessories. Now the OnePlus 6 is available in a few hues, Midnight Black, uh, there's also Mirror Black, Silk White and lately Amber Red. Let's see if the phone is worth the hype, it receives a notch for the first time in the OnePlus series and let's talk about the design first thing. So as I said before it's got glass at the back although you wouldn't tell it actually feels a bit like metal. It's matte and uh, the grip is quite solid you will not drop the phone, at least that was the first impression, even though after a longer period of usage, I noticed that you can actually make it slip from your hands, so it may become a bit slippery if you got sweatier palms. Now, it's a 6.28 inch, it's quite a big phone, although you wouldn't tell, it's well balanced and spaced, so you can easily access all the areas using your fingers. I wouldn't go as far as to say that it's comfy to use with a single hand, unless you have a really big hand, but it's pretty comfy. The buttons respond well to your commands, you got an extra button here, the mute alert slider is here on the side, power button and also the volume buttons. Now the thickness is 7.75 millimeters for the phone, the weight is 177 grams and if you compare it to the Huawei P20 Pro, well it compares favorably because it's about 3 grams lighter. It's got a solid build, it's made of premium materials, it really feels solid but once again for the sweatier palms it may slip from the hand. Otherwise comfy and there's a bit of a controversy here. Uh, it's supposed to be protected against water but it doesn't have an IP rating so not exactly fully waterproof. One thing I must also mention is the fact that it doesn't get smudged on the front and the back so that's nice. So comfy, premium materials may be slippery sometimes. When you're talking about the screen you can already notice we're dealing with a very, very bright panel. It's a 6.28 inch optic AMOLED 19 to 9 aspect panel with a notch at the top with a 2280 over 1080 pixel resolution and sRGB DCI P3 modes. Now the viewing experience goes something like this. Let's check it out. Okay, got this video here. But you can also use another player if you want to get a full screen experience properly. So let's go with this one. That's more like it. Now, as far as the viewing experience goes, as I said before, it's a very bright screen, very accurate colors, nice contrast. The blacks are pretty deep, wide view angles. And even in the full sunlight, we had zero problems with the phone. Okay, now, uh, as far as the other things are concerned, we put the screen under the microscope and as you can see here we got pentile matrix pixel arrangement and the brightness level we achieved was a top level of 597 lux units which is great so pentile matrix pixels 597 lux units it beats the nokia 8 the galaxy note 8 the iphone 8 plus scores below the xiaomi mi 6 the huawei p20 pro and the xperia xz plus the, even the oneplus 3 which was quite bright back in the day. Now when it comes to the settings for the screen we go here, we got adaptive brightness, you got brightness, you got sleep, night mode, reading mode and screen calibration which can be default, sRGB, DCI P3, adaptive and custom color that's cooler or warmer. So a lot of options for those photo buffs. There is also the notch display feature. You can hide the notch as shown here, it's pretty intuitive. You hide it and all the apps will be able to use the notch area. Or app display in full screen, ambient display, you simply lift up the phone and you can see stuff like uh, uh, messages you want to display, clock style and some notifications. Okay, uh, we got the theme, phone size, display size, auto rotate, pulse notification light and even LED notification colors. Very solid screen and now we move on to the hardware. 
Now, as far as the CPU is concerned, we're dealing here with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 845, the most powerful CPU available on mobile right now, accompanied by 6 or 8 GB of RAM of the LPDDR4X kind, plus 64 up to 256 GB of storage. There's no micro SD card slot, and the device felt pretty snappy no matter what we did, no matter what we installed, no matter how many apps we had available or had updating in the background, it was always snappy, fast and pretty fluid, which was to be expected. Now we also played games, we played Darkness Rises, an RPG with skills like Witcher, pretty nice, and also Riptide, which is our typical benchmark game, and was handled quite fine. Okay, we go here, let's play it, let's check out the graphics. Riptide GP, by the way, pretty nice sound in the games. Absolutely no overheating. Okay, and some nice controls based on tilt. Okay. Here we go. Excellent frame rate. There will be no frame drops. I'm actually loving the frame rate here. The lighting is excellent. We're doing some tricks. The water texture. So if you want a gaming phone, this may just be it on account of the powerful CPU and the other similar features. Now, let's see how we did uh, in the um, screenshot department, provided that we can actually find it. I guess I'm going to have to go uh, to the file manager in order to see the screenshots. Okay, go to albums and screenshots. Yes, we did a bunch of benchmarks. We got your Antutu here, we got your Geekbench and so forth. And um, for example, this is Antutu. In the Antutu test, let's see how well we scored. Okay, so this is the Antutu 7 result we achieved, which is pretty impressive, I would say. Uh, it's basically above all the other phones we've tested. It's the first placed phone. Uh, it beats the Asus Zenfone 5Z, which is the second placed phone. And once again, beats Galaxy S9 Plus, Xperia XZ2, HTC U12 Plus, whatever phone you can imagine, it's been beaten by this one. And uh, we also did the, the Geekbench 4 test. In this one, the multi-core subtest with HTC U12 Plus, Asus Zenfone 5Z, but scored below the iPhone 10 and the Galaxy S9 Plus. When it comes to the graphics, good old Slingshot is here, and in Slingshot 3.0, we're able to play second, second only to the Zenfone 5Z by a few points, so basically about on the same level. We also beat Galaxy S9 Plus, HTC U12 Plus, so when it comes to Android, this is one of the most powerful phones out there. When it comes to Antutu, the most powerful phone out there. Now, if you're also wondering about the temperature, we also did those tests. We achieved 33.9 degrees Celsius in the game Riptide you saw from before, and in GFX Bench, a bit hotter, 39.5, but still no overheating, luckily. Okay, we go further, we're talking about the battery. It's a 3300 mAh unit with fast charge, 5 volt, 4 amperes, and uh, it's actually excellent uh, when it comes to the video playback as you're going to see in a minute now. Okay, we go here, once again to the screenshots, and let's see exactly what time duration we reached on this phone. With a bunch of tests, as you know, we usually do PC mark, which is the continuous usage test, and also a video playback test, which I'm going to try and find right now. Okay, so a lot of screenshots here. I guess it's this one. Maybe this one. Okay, so here we go. Uh, when it comes to the HD video playback test, we achieved 11 hours and 4 minutes, so almost one whole season of TV show, you know, 12 hours. It's rather good, 11 hours and 4 minutes. It beats the iPhone 8, the Nokia 8, the Zenfone 5Z. Still, it scores below the Galaxy S9 Plus and the Google Pixel 2 XL, as well as the Huawei P20 Pro, which actually broke a few records back in its day. We also did a PC Mark test, you know, that one that simulates continuous usage. And in that test, we're able to achieve 7 hours and 48 minutes. Rest assured, you will see it when it comes time for the text review. Okay, trying to find it here, should be here somewhere. So, as I said before, we were able to achieve a value of 7 hours and 48 minutes with this handset. Now, uh, other than that, I have to say that uh, this phone is able to beat the HTC 10 with this value, the Nokia 8. 
and the HTC U12 Plus, but it scores below the OnePlus 3, the Xperia XZ2, Galaxy S9 Plus, so a few of them. At the same time, with the 7 hours and 48 minutes of PCMR continuous usage, it's actually on par with the HTC U11, so take that into account. Now, when it comes to charging, it's actually excellent, only 1 hour and 8 minutes, and after 1 hour you're 95%, so I would say it's great, everything except for maybe the continuous usage, which should have been a bit better. Now, um, the settings for the battery are pretty straightforward. You got battery saver and battery optimization. That's about it. I would say a mixed battery, good video playback, excellent charging, but I expected more from continuous usage. When it comes to the audio, things are also pretty simple. Only one speaker here, a not very fortunate placement. You can cover it with your hand like this. In landscape, when you're watching a video or playing a game, you're going to cover it. It's inevitable. And now, uh, uh, you can either use Google Play Music or maybe install another player if you want to. And if you want to tweak a bunch of settings and options, you go here. Yeah, let's find the audio. Sound and vibration, audio tuner. You got here a bunch of channels to tweak, about uh, seven of them. You got equalizer settings, you got presets for music genres, you got audio switch for the headphones, earphone types and earphone modes, but we're more interested in the speaker at the bottom, so let's start playing some uh, tunes. Okay, playing some music. Okay, some conclusions, we have a pretty strong bass, a loud volume, the voice was also heard okay, the back vibrates just a little bit, and the guitar is simply uh, enchanting. Okay, so that's it when it comes to the playback, in case you're wondering why we didn't use play music, I can actually use it, but you know that problem when you have too many devices synced, happens to me every once in a while, and it's hard to actually remove them, but that's another thing entirely. So let's go back and check out the decibel meter tests because we also have those for you. So let's see the decibels. Okay, so here you can see the 84.4 decibels achieved with our typical audio sample. This beats the Nokia 8, the Pixel to XL Galaxy S9 Plus, so actually not bad. And uh, the other one, while it's no record breaker, it's pretty good, 97.8 decibels in Riptide GP Renegade, beats the Google Pixel to XL, Xperia XZ2, Galaxy S8, scores below the um, Galaxy Note 8 and the HTC U12+. Plus. Now that we're done with the acoustics, I would surely have preferred stereo speakers, but hey, that's life. Let's talk about the camera. Now, when it comes to the back camera, the package is familiar. It's a dual shooter here, 16 plus 20 megapixels. The 16 one is a Sony IMX519. It's got 1.22 micron pixels, optical stabilization, electronic stabilization, dual tone flash. The secondary one, 20 megapixel, also with a Sony sensor. We can do 4K, 60 frames per second video capture. And uh, you also have bokeh, of course. At the front, 16 megapixel camera right here within the notch. Once again, a Sony sensor, but this one has a fixed focus and electronic image stabilization. Now the interface, pretty straightforward. You saw it in the unboxing. It's very simple. You got the aspect, you got the HDR, you got the modes, and we also have a pro mode, panorama, and all that, plus instant 2x zoom. Now I'm going to go, to, I'm going to go straight to the gallery. We have a lot of shots here. Some of them looking pretty impressive, pretty vivid colors, even though every once in a while, uh, we tended to burn the green a little bit. Now. In general, I was very happy with the color, color calibration and clarity. Also, a lot of details. I would even go as far as to say that we're at Xperia level of details. And uh, superb colors overall, except for the green, which was a bit like the Huawei P20 Pro, which means a bit burned at times. And I'm getting some Pixel to XL vibes. Some of those photos feel like painting. It feels like overprocessing. They simply look too good every once in a while. Um, let's see what else. The sky was nicely calibrated, not big burns, so pretty okay colors for the sky. Uh, some pretty nice HDR shots. The bokeh felt like a bit of a hit and miss. Every once in a while it produced 
excellent results, but every once in a while it had a hard time focusing on what I actually wanted to take a photo of. So let's maybe find a proper bokeh, like these shots here. I have to say these ones are pretty good. These are some of the good ones, but there are also some uh, more underwhelming shots. So it's a hit and miss affair, but when it hits, the bokeh is quite solid. And uh, we also have excellent texture of objects and sites, some pretty nice landscape shots. The zoom is not very impressive. You can go up to 2x or 3x and be satisfied. If you go past that 4x, 5x, 6x, you'll be underwhelmed. The panorama is generous, 23,520 over 3760 pixels. And we also did selfies and we actually did a lot of selfies. And I was pretty impressed by them, although they would be more impressive for an 8 megapixel or 12 megapixel camera from 16 megapixel shooter. I expected more in spite of that excellent face, face texture, eye texture, hair texture, and even the background looks okay. And by the way, you can also do bokeh with the front camera like I did here. And the results are actually quite nice. I would put it on par with the Google Pixel 2 XL, which is, was a sort of champion when it came to bokeh facial selfie bokeh and overall this phone feels like it's the equal of the Galaxy S9 Plus Google Pixel 2 XL when it comes to the clarity and details and even the iPhone 10. The only drawback is the fact that some photos look a bit over processed and the hue of green is a bit unrealistic for me but overall I feel it's a bit superior to the Huawei P20 Pro and the Xperia XZ2 which tended to burn the shots a bit more than this one. Some of the pictures simply look too good. And for example, HTC U12 Plus catches a more realistic set of colors. The selfie feels like top five material, even though uh, I feel it could go even higher somehow in, uh, let's say, clarity. Okay, these are daytime shots. We also have low light shots. So let's try and find them. Okay, probably in a separate folder. Nice organization here. So camera at night, here we go. Now when it comes to the low light captures, I have to say that clarity was optimal. Pretty excellent colors. I'm actually more impressed by the colors during the nighttime than I am impressed by those during the daytime. So keep that in mind. In spite of that, I felt that uh, things were a bit darker compared to a Galaxy S9 Plus or the Pixel 2 XL. You can see here some of the shots. We also have this one here. At first I was tempted to say that the street light halos are a bit underwhelming, but then I actually saw them being okay in several of the shots. There are some artifacts here and there, but in general the color calibration was excellent, very nice clarity. It really feels like a 2018 flagship, but a bit darker than what the other companies have to offer. A nice level of yellow, not too yellow, not too blue, not too orange. So you can take some nice nighttime shots. It's certainly top 5 2018, but um, it's below at least three other phones in brightness. Okay, now that we're done with that, let's talk about the uh, videos. Let's see where we have them. So here we go, videos. This should be pretty straightforward. So we shot Full HD MP4, 30 frames per second, 20 mega per second. And uh, I found that uh, there is a bit of a burn happening every once in a while. Here we go. The best thing about these captures is certainly, if you ask me, the microphone. So we caught a fantastic bass for the song that was going on here. I have to say it again, a bit of burn for the hue of green. Pretty solid focus and clarity. A nice sky. And when you zoom in, you'll be a bit underwhelmed. Once again, excellent bass. So if you're planning on going to concerts, this microphone will rock your world. This is a 4K 60 frames per second video. It looks perfect. It looks comparable to the Galaxy S9 Plus, iPhone 10, whatever phone you throw at it, it's perfect. Maybe except for a bit of dynamic range oddness at the top, but overall pretty satisfied with this type of capture. Okay, let's see some other videos here. We did one where we were walking, testing the stabilization. I have to say, I'm pretty underwhelmed. There's a bit of flicker, so every step I climb, you'll see a bit of jerkiness, a bit of motion, and that's annoying. I've seen much better on Xperia, Galaxy S9 Plus, and even the iPhone 10, but not the Huawei P20 Pro, which could be better 
although I feel that even that one is comparable to this one. A bit shaky, but at least there's no refocusing and the level of light caught here is okay. Something that I noticed on this phone is that the panning feels a bit machine-like, so in general panning should be fluid. This one feels like it's uh, using AI or a robot to do the panning in some sort of wannabe fluid steps. That's my feeling. And once again, the greens were a bit burned by the sun, like it happened for the pics. So basically, it's more comparable to the Huawei P20 Pro than the Galaxy S9 Plus. That's the vibe I'm getting here. We also did a slow-mo of a pigeon and more videos, which you're going to see in the full uh, text review. But the surprise was the selfie video, which is actually excellent. I would go as far as to say that the stabilization was perfect. Electronic one, of course. Here you will also notice that odd panning. Anyways, excellent selfie video, that's for sure. I would even go as far as to say it's the best selfie video I've caught all year. These are the daytime shots. We got a nighttime shot, nighttime video, a bit too yellow for my taste. Street light halos are quite big. Microphone remains excellent. The image is a bit shaky and also darker than the competition. Some light artifacts will also appear every once in a while. If you look closely at the sources of light, you'll notice artifacts, especially when panning. Let's go here. And here we go. The artifacts should appear about now. And also a bit of orange that snuck in this image. So overall, while the photo capture could fight Galaxy S9 Plus, iPhone 10, and so forth, the video capture remains a bit below them, and that's the conclusion. If it weren't for dynamic range and slight overexposure and some uh, stabilization oddities, it would be a perfect set of cameras. When it comes to the web browser, we're dealing with Chrome, which has a pretty excellent speed. And we're also using a stock keyboard with swipe. The benchmarks of the browser are also quite good. And I'm talking about SunSpider and Velamo. Fluid experience here. And now I guess it's time to talk about the uh, connectivity. So the OnePlus 6 has a USB Type-C 2.0 port at the bottom. It's got an audio jack. It's got dual nano SIM slots, 4G LT category 16 with MIMO, Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, A, C, you name it. We got everything. We got Bluetooth 5.0, NFC, GPS, GLONASS, Beidou and Galileo. The calls were perfect. The microphones were once again top notch. And we also did a speed test or two. And let's see what came out of that experience. So. Once again, we're going to have to go to the screenshots. And here we are. These are the speeds we achieved. Excellent Wi-Fi, 328 mega per second downloads, 25.8 mega per second uploads. And when it comes to 4G, 121 mega per second downloads, 62.5 mega per second uploads. That's it for the software. Uh, excuse me, that's it for the connectivity. We haven't even reached the software. Now it's time for the software. It's actually Android 8.1 Oreo with Oxygen OS on top, the latest one, and it actually was updated twice since I started reviewing it. It's got stuff, stuff, basically. You got the carousel for the multitasking, and uh, you can also do split screen. So for example, I can use the gallery. Well, apparently, doesn't support it. I can use Chrome on one part of the screen, and I can use settings on the other, so I can browse. And at the same time I'm browsing, I can also check out the settings. Let's go here. So settings in one, Chrome in the other, move around here, move around here, and that's split screen in a nutshell. We have an aggregator on the leftmost home screen. It aggregates your memo, contacts, dashboard, apps, cards, weather, the most useful stuff, pretty handy. Now, if you keep the screen pressed, the home screen, you got your wallpapers, you got your widgets, of course, all of them stock, you got your home settings, you can add icons, swipe down, trigger the shelf, double tap to lock, notification dots, icon pack, and also home screen layout. You can do a bunch of tweaks if you prefer a different look and even download some stuff. The drop down includes the notifications and quick settings here, which include a gaming mode, a reading mode, and a hotspot. And other than that, I feel it's time to talk about the security a little bit. Uh, now, if you go here, security should be right about here. So you got Google Play Protect, Find My Device, Screen Lock, and you can add a fingerprint. And be prepared for that because um, it's actually mind-blowing. How can a fingerprint be mind-blowing? Check it out. So here we go. 
First of all, it's pretty hard to find the sensor. It's rather flat and you can easily put your finger on another part of the back side. It's not very well highlighted, but it's the fastest I've ever tested. Just a mere touch of a part of your print and it's unlocked. The fastest fingerprint award goes to the OnePlus 6 for sure. And in case this isn't enough, you have the face scanning. So let me remove this one. Swipe, remove, and let's see how the face unlock behaves. So face unlock is here, secured with a pin. Uh, okay, one, two, three, four. Add face data, next. Okay, that was a longer than usual scan, but it's well worth it. Here we go. Instant unlock. It doesn't see my face, it doesn't unlock, but then it sees my face and unlocks. Not as fast as the Zenfone 5Z, but still pretty, pretty fast. Okay, other than that, uh, the settings include other features. We got location, we got apps, sound and vibration, date and input, advanced stuff, accessibility, pocket mode, OTG mode, OnePlus notifications. There's even a special gaming mode, which can block notifications. There's OnePlus Switch, if you have a new phone, you want to transfer stuff. Uh, let's see what else, battery, a bunch of uh, gestures, long press to take a photo, draw letters, status bar, there's font, there's also the alert slider. You got a three position button here on the side. You can set it to silent, vibration and ring mode. Those are the modes you're playing with. Okay, so now let's talk about apps. Okay, so when it comes to the pre-installed apps, things are pretty straightforward. There's 26 of them and uh, not much extras compared to the straight package. You got Duo, File Manager, Gmail, Drive. You got this community app, which is useful to see what other people are saying about the phone and uh, OnePlus products in general. Uh, we also have uh, Maps, Google, there's Notes. There's this one here, if you're switching from another phone. You got the recorder, we got your settings, you got your weather, and that's pretty much it. And once again, you have that feature, which is that sort of glance feature, which you can activate from here. Uh, should be here somewhere. Ambient display, lift up to display, display a message, notifications. Uh, you have the phone like this, you lift it up, you should be able to see some info just like that. And it also uses a bit of power, but you can tweak it anyways. So this is it, this is the review of the OnePlus 6 here at gsml.com and I guess it's time to go for the verdict right now. So on the pro side, you have a pretty nice finishing of the back with a matte glass, a bit of personality, very fast charge, best performance so far in the world of Androids, fast fingerprint analog, fast face unlock, bright screen, very bright screen, pretty okay volume from the speaker, fantastic microphone, solid pictures and selfies, great price tag, and an okay video playback time achieved with the battery. Those are the pros. On the con side, not waterproofed enough with IP ratings, no stereo speakers. The green color of the pics and video is as underwhelming. Stabilization should be better for the video. And I expected a bit more from the continuous usage, you know, PC mark. In the end, this remains an excellent bang for the buck phone. Doesn't make many compromises. It's just the usual OnePlus phone. OnePlus phones never excelled in the camera. This actually goes a bit above its conditions. And uh, I would have to say it's got the best microphone, the best selfie video, the best fingerprint unlocking. Those are best. And it's also a very solid gaming device on account of performance and the software. To be honest, I found it to be flawless. One of the best software implementations of Android I've seen. So software, selfie, microphone and gaming. Those are the cores here. And OnePlus already has a bunch of brand fans that are going to buy this because they're fans. And that's something you rarely see with other companies out there, even Samsung and Huawei. This is it from us. This has been the review of the OnePlus 6, the best bang for the buck phone right now, especially with 8GB of RAM. Bye bye.